that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. Embark on a sensory odyssey as Andrew Huberman unveils the captivating journey from humble bean to mesmerizing brew, immersing us in the art and science of coffee, an elixir that has the power to ignite our senses and awaken our souls. Yeah, but not just get up and go outside for a few minutes. Take yeah, your yeah. coffee outside or whatever. Okay. Take it, you know, even if you're looking at your phone, get that sun in, in your eyes. It really does make it, it stabilizes your mental health and your sleep and everything else. Okay. And there are good studies on this. Uh, it makes it so that 16 hours later, your brain will start releasing its own melatonin, which help you get to sleep. Mm. I don't recommend people take melatonin, yeah. which is a hormone. It's got all sorts of issues. It's what keeps kids from going into puberty early. Uh -huh delve into the depths of coffee's enchanting allure as Huberman peels back the layers, exposing the intricate dance between cultivation, roasting, and extraction, a symphony of flavors that tantalizes our palates and transports us to the realms of pure bliss. But if you're crashing in the afternoon in a way that you don't want to, wake up in the morning and try not drink any caffeine for the first 90 minutes, maybe, or even two hours. It's kind of painful at first. Yeah. But first of all, that cup of coffee tastes amazing Ooh. when it does come around. Yeah. And, it hits your and then it kind of takes you all day long. Prepare to be bewitched by the alchemical transformation of coffee. As Huberman reveals the delicate balance of chemical compounds and brewing techniques that unlock its hidden potential. So I would stop drinking caffeine around two or three in the afternoon. Many people find that they can drink caffeine until eight or 9 p.m. and then still fall asleep. But the quality of your sleep will be greatly disrupted. So try and taper that off uh, toward the afternoon. The other thing that you can do is that if you use caffeine regularly, I recommend, again, drinking caffeine, um, avoiding caffeine for in the first 90 to 120 minutes after waking. Crafting a liquid elixir that fuels our passions and ignites our creative sparks. As the aroma of freshly ground beans permeates the air, Huberman unveils the untold stories behind each cup. And... Basically, you get sleepy because of the buildup of a chemical in your body called adenosine. Huh. So if we were to stay up for a day and a half, you just are worked, you know, right. you're just exhausted. You have a lot of adenosine in your system. When you sleep, that gets cleared out. Hmm. Caffeine is an adenosine blocker. So when you drink caffeine, mm -hmm. you block the adenosine sort of places where it parks, we call it a receptor. Mm -hmm. But when the caffeine wears off, then the adenosine binds at much higher, what we call affinity. Okay. And all of a sudden you just get with that adenosine crash. Oh. An exploration of cultural heritage, geographical nuances, and the interplay of terroir and craftsmanship that render each sips a profound sensory experience. This molecule that accumulates the longer that we are awake, that actually gets reduced during sleep so that we can wake up feeling rested. Okay. In other words, if you've been up for a day and a half, you've got tons of adenosine in your system. Caffeine of any kind is an adenosine blocks adenosine function. I want to be careful because it's not actually an antagonist. It's a competitive agonist for the aficionados. But you're basically reducing adenosine function with caffeine. When you sleep, you reduce adenosine, which is why I delay my caffeine 90 to 20 mm -hmm. minutes after waking up. Journey through the coffee plantations of distant lands where Huberman unveils the tireless efforts of farmers, their hands toiling in harmony with nature to cultivate the perfect beans each sun-kissed cherry representing a labor of love and dedication to the craft. But it also triggers the release of, of adrenaline, also called epinephrine. Epinephrine and adrenaline are the same thing. From the brain and body, two sources. There's a, you have your adrenal glands above your kidneys. That's one source. And then you have a collection of little neurons in your brainstem called the locus ceruleus. Locus ceruleus is an amazing structure. It sends those little wires we call axons off into different areas of the brain, acts like kind of a sprinkler, sprinkler system, releasing epinephrine and creating states of alertness in the brain. And caffeine stimulates those neurons to release adrenaline. So it literally creates wakefulness in the brain and wakefulness in the body through locus ceruleus in the brain and the adrenals in the body. In addition, it does something really cool, which is that it increases the sensitivity of the dopamine receptors. Now we haven't talked too much about dopamine, but dopamine is perhaps the most powerful neuromodulator. It's involved in movement. That's why people who have Parkinson's are deficient in dopamine neurons and they have trouble generating um, smooth movements. So they shake, they have trouble in severe cases, they can't speak, they, they feel depressed because dopamine is not, um, we hear about dopamine hits. It's in, in other areas of the brain and body such that it controls 
motivation, craving, and drive. Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body, if you, so to speak. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect, not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake, or at least most of it, to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine sometimes, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. And listen, the 90 to 120 minutes, you can ratchet toward that. You can try and push it out 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It is important to hydrate early in the day too. Caffeine is very dehydrating. It causes a, the, for various reasons that relate to the, its effects on the kidneys, you start to excrete sodium and potassium and the electrolytes. And those, uh, the action potential, the firing of neurons that we were talking about earlier is mediated by the entry of sodium into the nerve cells. And to some extent, the the exit of potassium, it's a, it's a coordinated dance there. You need electrolytes for your nerve cells to fire. So when you're dehydrated, you can't think as well. You can't function as well at the neuromuscular junction. So the first thing I do when I wake up is drink water. I mean, you should hydrate first thing in the morning. Obviously, you should use the bathroom too if you need to do that. But then push out that caffeine intake a little bit. And it, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable at first, but... And some people don't experience an afternoon crash or people that are going back for more caffeine in the afternoon, they often find that they can drop or have the amount of caffeine that they're drinking in the afternoon, which then has a nice cascade on the sleep system and the ability to fall asleep. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine acts as what's called a competitive, uh, it, it, well, let, let's just keep it simple. It essentially binds to the receptor that, that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds, so it's an agonist, but it, it outcompetes the adenosine so the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around two or 3 p.m., as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash or at least uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. And then I do not drink caffeine right away. It's important in many ways to delay caffeine enough so that you can clear out some of the chemical signals in the brain and body that lead to a that lead to a feeling of fatigue. So the longer you're awake, the more a molecule called adenosine builds up in your system. And when you sleep, you push that adenosine level back down. When you wake up in the morning, that adenosine level can be zero, but oftentimes there's still some hanging around. Caffeine is an adenosine antagonist. It blocks adenosine function. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's effectively what it does. So if you wake up and you've got Let's say 20%, let's make, uh, this is arbitrary, but 20% of your adenosine has still hasn't been cleared out. That's sort of a drowsiness that you woke up with. Mm -hmm. Then you go and you drink your coffee and you crush that, that uh, ability of adenosine to have that effect, but it hasn't gone away. So that when your coffee wears off mid-morning, now that adenosine is there and you feel like there's a mid-morning crash or an afternoon crash. So I delay my caffeine intake for about 90 and ideally 120 mm. minutes after I wake up. Because in that way, you bring your adenosine level down very, very low to zero, and then you don't get this rebound crash in the afternoon. For years, I would get this post-lunch crash. 